Good morning, everybody. How are you today? Hope you're having a great morning. I feel like it should be Friday. This week's been <laughs> only a couple of days, and I feel like it's been an eternity. Uh, I haven't felt well this week. So, yeah, it's... Uh, It's just been one of those days. Got a really, really dry, scratchy throat, so hopefully that won't interfere and I won't have a coughing fit while I am teaching this. I've got my water to help keep my throat moist. So I hope you all were able to get your line drawing over on my website, lonlam.com, and get um, ready to paint this uh, pop art frog with me although it could be a lizard apparently there's a very famous pop art uh, lizard out there that this <laughs> really resembles who knew um, but uh, I actually drew mine from a photograph of a frog it's very interesting I must have seen the other one at some point and had had it in my mind as I was painting it I don't know but um, yeah, this little guy I'm calling a frog, although his eyes really are more lizard eyes. But the frog that I was drawing it from, I didn't really like his eyes. <laughs> so that's why he got eyes like this. So good morning, good morning, Don, Cheryl, Rosanna, Monty. So glad to have you here. Debbie, it's great to have you guys here. This is um, midweek, well, sort of midweek <laughs> for my live, but... Artwave starts this evening, so this week and through the weekend is taken up with Artwave's stuff. So um, I didn't want to have anything going on that would interfere with that uh, event that's going to be going. So this was my pick day of the week <laughs> to get alive to you. So uh, I really hope you guys are going to enjoy this. So I'm going to be using Deco Art Traditions paints for this. Um, if you did get the line drawing on my website, um, it did have the conversion for Americana paints. But honestly, when you're painting something like this, you can use whatever colors that you want. There's really no rules except try not to make your paints go muddy when you're applying them because um, we do a, a lot of layering on this project. And uh, so it takes um, a little practice on putting your paints on top of each other without letting them turn to mud. Trust me, my frog, his body turned to mud very quickly. So I had to get him dry and kind of start the layering process over. But uh, I think he turned out super cute. So um, I appreciate you guys being here with me. If you are new to my YouTube channel, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you are notified every single time that I post a video. And um, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this. Uh, I appreciate you all and look forward to sharing this really cute frog. I'm looking for, <laughs> there we go, I'm looking for me to put me up small in the corner and I kept clicking on everything but me. So there we go right there all right this is where you should be now i'm painting just on matte board today i've applied three coats of white gesso to mine to get it similar to the surface that i painted on which was just a piece of masonite or hardboard um, is what i painted this guy on eight by eight um, i had to come up with something really quick i only had a couple hours to sit down and grab some paints and try and you know sketch something out and and do something so um yeah i think he turned out super super cute so you should be at this point now the paints that i'm going to be using like i said are the traditions paints i absolutely love these paints now um, they are in the process of repackaging these paints and um let me see if my light is set on the right there we go um, so currently, uh, on decoart.com, I don't think you can get these, but they should be coming back, uh, uh, online to purchase very, very quickly. Um, they had gone to a tube like this a few years ago, but they're going back to a bottle like this. Uh, this is a three ounce. I think they're going to a two ounce bottle. 
Not 100% sure on that, but um, they will be putting them back in bottles, which I love. I have plenty of room to store. My paint cabinet over here, the whole bottom row is nothing but Traditions paints. So um, I highly recommend that you try them. They are an artist grade paint, artist quality, medium body, so pigmented, um, just luscious, luscious paints. All right, so I only used a few brushes for this. I used a half inch flat, an eight filbert, and a two round, so I didn't use a whole lot. Uh, you'll need a piece of graphite paper for when we put on our glasses later. I'm gonna use this gray. Shiny side is the side I want to go down. You could use an identipen if you want. I did not. Um, if you want to use it to line around the eyes and go over the mouth, but I wanted it all to stay very true pop art, nothing perfect. So you do, you can use one of these. Plus I didn't want, because I had so much paint on my painting, I didn't want it to gunk up my um, identipen. Uh, a stylus or a pencil to trace your glasses on later. Palette, water basin, paper towels. All right, let's do the paint list real quick. I've got naphthol red, yellow oxide, and medium green. Hands of yellow medium, dioxinine purple, carbon black, and aquamarine. Uh, burnt umber, burnt sienna, and raw umber, and titanium white. What did I do with my white? I think I set it back over here because I was looking for something. Here we go. All right, titanium white. So we need all of those colors right there. So, hi Linda, good to see you too. Hi Anita, good to have you here. Oh, let me moisten up here. This should be a fairly fast project, I think. Well, let me get my palette camera up here for you guys. And I think I have a picture of this frog somewhere. There we go. So, now, when you paint pop art, trust me, there's no way, no way that I can identically replicate this frog that I painted. There's just no way I can replicate him. Because you lay colors in in a different way, you mix them, I mean, you know, you're just randomly getting paint. So um, I'm going to attempt. I've got it sitting right here in front of me. I'm going to attempt to get fairly close to it, but I don't make any promises. Um, I also use some um, drywall tape and some Punchinella. These are both available on my website, 18 inches for $1. And then I'm going to be using some pieces of makeup sponge. To do my stenciling with you can certainly use a very small stenciling brush or a small little scruffy brush something you can get into a small area with when we get onto the glasses so we're going to start on the background Let me go ahead and dampen my larger brush here and <clears throat> excuse me we're going to use white and raw ember my raw umber out and my white and you like I said you can certainly use whatever colors that you want uh, when you're painting pop art it does not there it's the one thing that you can paint that you can kind of break the rules <laughs> I think that's why I like painting it because um, you know I can just do whatever and it's gonna be okay so we're gonna work on the background first. Um, the background, all I did was, I did a semi-smooth coat of the raw umber and white, and then I just went back with my brush and made brush strokes all through it to um, give it that little bit of texture look. You can paint it in all one color, a black, well, I was gonna say a black background would be nice, but his glasses are black, so they might kind of blend in with the background. You could certainly leave the background white um, paint it any color that you have within the colors that you're using. Um, a solid color is fine. You don't have to do it exactly like I'm doing it. So I am going to grab some white paint. And my burnt umber is not 
on the camera shot there so there we go all right burnt umber and white right there grab some burnt umber and I'm not gonna even worry about mixing it on my brush I'm just going to pick up paint randomly and kind of slap it down if I feel like it's getting too much of one color I'll wipe my brush off on my paper towel and just grab some of the other color I do want to go around my frog carefully I want to get a little bit more dark stuff going here wipe my brush off and grab some white it's just a rough rough I really don't want to paint my frog so I'll wipe that off and grab some white I'm just using my uh, largest flat brush that I listed. I listed a half inch flat. So let dark in there, then grab some white. frog in the eye again touch that up Put a little bit more white up there we, I just want a messy messy background okay I don't I don't want anything too perfect here raw umber in there, get some darkness going on. All right, just go back around it and wherever you feel like, oh, I think I need a little more white in there. I need a little more white in there. I'm going to have to touch up that eye. I want a little bit more dark stuff over here a little bit more there we go I wasn't wanting to lay in like I wanted it and then just some sloppy little X marks and whatever and just make a messy little background that's that's really all there is to the background it's um, just some messy little brush strokes. Now if you do end up getting it on your frog, don't worry. We'll just come back and add some white on there. Okay, I think the background looks pretty good. I'm going to remove these papers. They were there to keep from getting paint all over my turntable here. Not that it doesn't already have a lot of paint on it, but um, yeah. I'm going to see if I can remove a little bit of that that I got on the frog, especially the eyes, because the eyes are going to be a different color. So I'm going to take a damp brush, and if I can't remove it, I'll dampen it and take my little white um, plastic eraser and remove it with that brightness will have some paint in it and I really want just the eyes the rest of the body it doesn't matter so much just as long as you've still got the shape but um, well goodness gracious I'll have to get me a new paper towel because I keep wiping the water out of my brush on that spot that has paint. Definitely getting a new paper towel here. I mean, I do want a little bit of darkening in the eye, but not on the top of the eye. 
when I go to paint it, I don't want it to be a dark color. So that will change it up too much. All right. Okay, he's looking pretty good for the outside of him. I'm going to put my clean paper towel down here. I'm going to prop him up a little bit. And we're going to get going on this little guy. Oh, I'm glad you found the pattern, Debbie. That's great. That's great. Hi, Kay. Hi, Mary. Hi, Jean. All right. So let's get going on this guy. Um, the first color I want to put in the eyes is some gold. We'll get them layered in right now. Um, and then I'm going to put all of my colors out on my palette. So I'm going to take some gold and a little bit of white. This is the yellow oxide. And some white. And we'll just put our first layer in the eye here. The eyes need to be really good. Now I just took a... Uh, circle template and drew these eyes in so they would be a nice circle. So if you don't have a circle template, which I got mine at Michael's in the fine arts department, it would also be in probably the drafting area where they have drafting supplies. Um, then find something round that you have that is the same size of the eyes and draw your circle around that. Okay. Well, there is the first layer for our little frog. So I'm going to grab all my, my colors and put them out on my palette. And just have them all ready because we'll be picking up colors at random. I probably don't need near what I'm putting out here. I want to make sure you can see the color. Green. Okay, what else we got? Dioxane purple is going to look like black when I put it out there. But it's not. So I'll make sure I put my black at the top so I don't get them confused. Um, our aquamarine. I'll put my black at the top. Oh, goodness. And then when I'm ready to paint my glasses in, I can put my black somewhere else. Uh, this is burnt sienna. I didn't use a whole lot of burnt sienna in the project. And my raw umber I've already got there. Let's put some burnt umber out, and I'll definitely want more white out. And this burnt umber was kind of thick in this tube. All right, and some more white out here. I'm going to make sure I have plenty of white because it seems like I did mix white with a few of my colors. Okay, so um, with pop art, like I said, no rules. Um, do I have a substitute colors? Uh, yes, on the line drawing, I did put a conversion for Americana. So um, I don't know what that is right now. I don't have that in front of me, but you can go there and... Uh, the line drawing will convert or like I said pick whatever colors that you like because it does your he doesn't have to be the same colors that I pick he can be any colors that you like so uh, just be creative there and pick whatever you like so um, I'm gonna have that line does not look very straight let me erase that if I can and maybe draw it in a little bit better I did not Put that line on very good. Um, this area through here, we want to keep it between these two areas a little bit lighter. So we're going to start out with a little bit lighter color in there. Now I am just going to lay colors randomly on this frog. It is going to look horrific. Believe me, it's going to look horrific. So just bear with me and hang in there. I'm going to grab a little bit of the yellow and the white 
and we're not doing brush strokes per se <laughs> we're just throwing in some paint okay uh, maybe put a little bit of this here maybe a little here we're just going to pick colors at random and throw them on here okay I'm not going to wash my brush for this color, but most of my colors I will wash my brush for. Okay. Um, I think I might actually add some of that gold into it with my green. You can mix whatever colors that you want. And we'll just lay some in. Just tap it in. Like I said, this will not end up looking anything like my original, I'm sure. Because I don't know what colors I laid in where. Um, I want this to be a little lighter here, this blue, this aquamarine. I love this color. I will use it just straight later, but um, one thing I like about the Traditions paints is that it stays damp a little bit longer. So you can kind of play with your paints a little bit and just really throw them in there. This is really such a freeing design. All right, let's do some purple. I'm gonna to have to move down here because I'll mix some white in with it and I kind of crowded myself up there. So we're gonna put some purple in here. We'll just start out with a light purple. Um, we'll definitely be darkening as we go through here, but right now we're just, you know, having fun just throwing some colors in there. and. I know you're going to think, how is that ever going to be anything? <laughs> but it will. It will. Okay. Let's go with a little bit of burnt umber. And some of this will go up through here. And because we're just using colors very quickly and loosely, um, this really comes together very fast. So, I'm going to put some here where the arm could be. I don't know what colors I put on my... I know I used all of these colors, but I don't really remember exactly where I placed colors on the frog. Okay? Alright, let's grab some red. I know I have red at the top. That's the one color I can really see. So we'll just go along here, and I'll try to mimic that red part up there. And then just kind of drag it down. Lots of colors to go yet. Lots of, I don't want to say lots of layers, but there are more layers to go. So just wherever. I mean, see, he's looking really, really bad. Really bad, but he will improve. Trust me. All right, I think I'll make a little bit of an orange color here. Maybe put some orange on him. I don't even know if I put orange on my other one, but why not? Why not? We got the colors. We can mix it. Just go for it. Wherever you want it to go. Okay, we've almost got all of, this is what I call the under painting of the frog, where we have almost all of the frog area covered. And then we come back. I'll come back in with my filbert brush in just a minute and start doing more layering in specific places, okay? So we'll put a little bit of this. Let's get our rest of our frog kind of painted in. This is that aquamarine. Now we just want to get all of our white areas kind of covered. And there is a little bit of this that goes up over the eye. But not in the eye. Although this color would be okay if it got in the eye because we put green on the top. down here. I just want to cover up my white areas that I have left and then 
down here on the chin, I think I'll go with more of that golden color. Down here. Oh, got into my purple, which is okay, but I really didn't want it to be right there. So, I mean, I do add purple on the, the frog later, but let's take that down just a scourge. And then I'll go into my gold, and we'll finish out the chin with some gold here. There we go. We got our first messy, 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 messy layers in. Super messy layers, so. All right. Um, I kind of lost my shape here on my eye, so let me fix that. And then we're going to go ahead and put a another layer on our eyes. Um, I'm going to use the bright yellow and the darker yellow and some white, I think, is what I used. Not 100% sure on that, but that's what I'm going for. And these colors are going to stay on the lower part of the eye. So we'll just put these in. That brighter yellow is going to keep this a brighter color and not so muted like that gold. The gold and the white is what we use to begin with. Okay, I'm going to put my first layer in the um, upper part, which is the green and the bright yellow and a little bit of white. And we'll be coming back to repeat all of this, but this gives it a chance to get dry enough for us to work it a little bit later. I'm just using that large flat that I've been working with since I started. Okay. There's a good start to the eyeballs. So, he's a looking rough, but we're gonna fix him up. All right, so I'm gonna work in this area right through here. So I'm gonna take my, my yellows, my gold and my um, other yellow, and I'm gonna just tap some of this color in here, wipe my brush, this is this particular style of painting. I tend to use a lot more paper towels <laughs> because I wipe my brush off frequently. Alright, let's put a little bit of that aquamarine in here. I'm, I'm trying to look at, at my um, original and trying to mimic a little bit of the same colors. I know I'm not going to get it um, exactly the same by any means. And I keep picking up pay purple on my paper towel, so putting purple where I don't really want it. Okay, wipe off. And just pee pat. This this area and this area right here are the only two areas where I first kind of smoothed it out. Everything else, it's just paint thrown in there randomly, whatever. Um, so let's go with our red up here. I want to make sure this line at the top of the middle of the head here stays a pretty smooth line. I'm going to wipe off and grab some yellow, that bright yellow. And I'm going to have to mix maybe a little white with it to make it opaque. So it makes it a little bit of an orange, and I just kind of tapped some in through here. Just, you know, have have kind of fun with it. And don't, I keep telling you, don't stress out about it. I, but it's, it's key when you're painting this style of painting. So I want a little bit of orangey color. Get some white in there. Right through here. To try and mimic that. Um, my 
original one. Like I said, I'm not going to even remotely get it close, but I'll do my best. All right. A lot of times, too, when I'm painting this style of painting, I just use my fingers. They're the best tool you have for blending out things, although you don't want to over blend when you're, you're doing this style of painting, but you do want to have a little bit of blending in there, and this makes it a little bit easier. A little bit of yellow. This is just that mix of yellow, the bright yellow, the dark yellow, the red. I think there might even be a little bit of white in there. Okay, this area underneath is uh, dioxinine purple. And I think I added a tiny bit of white in there just to lighten it up, uh, but not too much. I just kind of tapped it in through here. Underneath the mouth is a little bit darker. I can still see my line here, so kind of know where I'm going. I'm going to get a little bit of blue and purple, mix that together, and I'm going to go above, a little bit more purple there, grab a little water, and we'll go above. Again, whatever colors you want to use, you're not going to be wrong. We're going to highlight right across there, so that won't stay dark, but it gives us where our mouth goes which is black goes in that area. So I can take some of this now and take it out and around and I like this mix. This is really nice. This is the um, dioxanine and the uh, aquamarine mixed together. So this makes a nice shading color in place of using black or the raw umber. A little bit of water. My brush is getting dry. Okay. I like that color on there. That's a nice color. Okay, I'm going to go into my aquamarine and white. One of my favorite color mixes is this color right here. Um, I just think it's just just such a pretty color. Mixed together and I'm looking at my painting to see kind of where I placed all of this color. Still looking like a rough guy, but he's going to get there. All right, the yellow and the green, the bright yellow and the green mixed together. Let's add some of this in here. This is going to get him a little bit of frog color. When we add some more details in here, he'll come together. So. I, I just don't want you to look at him and see oh, all those spots all over him because, you know, they're all going to work their way to not being at the forefront of your mind when he gets done. I'm going to put a little bit through here. Right. So here. Put on uh, quite a bit there, so let me take my finger and tap that. He's looking pretty darn good, I think. I'm going to take some of this white and I need to put my black in. We need that little bit of dark underpainting there. But if you don't like it, don't put it on yours. You're painting. You're, he's your frog, so you make him how you like him. So that was a little bit of white and gold. Now I just want white. I'm just patting it on here through this area. I'm 
trying to keep it as close to my original one as I can. Need a little bit more of that light blue. More white. There we go. Much better. So I'm mimicking my other one here. Now down here I did put a few darker colors was down here on this chest because when I was painting my original one he got so muddy down here and, and then I had to work him back up to some brighter colors but those darker colors were still underneath and uh, keeping me from having a as bright on his body as I would have liked. So I'm going to take a little bit of dioxin and purple. I just wiped my brush off. I didn't I didn't um, clean it out. A little bit of moisture. I just want to pull down from the mouth. So see, we needed that darker color in there to kind of set a foundation here. I'm going to use some... Uh, Think some burnt umber. I need a little bit of brown in here. A little bit of moisture. Moisture, brown. We'll be doing a little bit of shading with this brown. I want to put this color right to here as kind of our shading through there. That little white area right there. Okay, I'll put a little bit more white through here. Straight white if you can. My white seems to be getting blended with everything else. Alright, I'm gonna go back to that burnt umber because on my original one, because I made it so um, muddy down here, I did have some darker color under here. So I'm going to put some under here and kind of pull it out. Oh, I've got a lot of moisture in my brush. Let's eliminate that right there. I don't want all that. Pretty much straight paint is what you end up using here. You don't, you don't need a lot of moisture when you're doing this because you want those colors to stay as bright and vibrant as you can get them it really helps let's put where the arms are although I can't really remember where they are I'll kind of give that look right there so I think I want to bring my red down a little bit here I'll get a little water in my brush because I do want that to be a little bit wetter where I ended there and I don't want some of that orangey color going there like I said there's no right or wrong here I'm gonna bring some of that bright green back in here that's the bright yellow and the um, green, the medium green. Bring a little bit of this back in here. Try not to go into your background. <laughs> and then I'm going to add a little more aquamarine in here with some white. Put a little lighter. I might put yellow through here because on my original one it's got more yellow going on with it. So let me grab some of that gold, maybe a little bright yellow in it, and we'll put some of this in down here. 
once we add our little stenciling on top, it's really going to help make that gold area kind of pop a little bit, I think. All right, I want to put a little of this gold through here, and a little bit through here. Just a little bit here, there, and everywhere. Like I said, there's no right or wrong. Just wherever you see, like, oh, that color would look really good there, or that color would look good there, you just go for those colors. This is that blue, that aquamarine, and a little bit of white. And I feel like I need to add a few places, a little bit more of the purple. Not too much. This purple is pretty potent stuff. So, so let's put a few places in here of this lighter purple. And we're going to put the mouth in in just a minute. He's looking so cute. All right, I'm going to go with my black. I'm still just using this um, this filbert brush, but you can certainly go to a round brush. And I'm going to paint the mouth line in here. I'm really up on the tip of this chisel brush here, or this filbert brush here, so um, if you do use a filbert brush, I don't think that side is going right. I think it needs to be more down. He's got it's kind of a pouty mouth. Put a little bit of this up here. I'm going to give him a couple of little nostrils here. I'm just going to use this same brush. Give him a couple there. And I'm going to put a little bit of this underneath the neck here. Just because I, I have it on my original one, so I'm trying to mimic that the best I can. Um, but really, all of this right through here just looks incredibly dark to me. So, pick a color and try and take some of that down a little bit. I mean, I want it to be dark right there. It just doesn't need to be quite so... I don't know. Far down, I guess. I wasn't liking that. Go back with some of my burnt umber. Yep. I love his head. Just like on my original one. I loved the head when I got done putting all those colors in there. But I didn't like the body until I put the stenciling on it. It's the same way down here. I'm not a fan of the body here. So. I'm just going to throw in some colors similar to my original. And see if I can't get that to look a little bit better. I don't know what it is about the body down there. It just... Just gave me fits every time. All right, I'm getting a new paper towel because that one is drenched. Let's go back up to our eyes. I want to put another coat of both colors in the eyes. So that was the light yellow and the dark yellow. Um, I did add white last time, but this time I'm just going to stick with the two yellows. I want this down here to be a little bit darker.
I know it's hard for some people to paint this way because they want the more controlled painting where they know exactly where they're going with each color and it has a specific place and a purpose in that place and all of that stuff but um, sometimes you just gotta paint outside of your comfort zone and try something a little fun and that's what I like about pop art is you can make up your own rules and it doesn't have to be as you know as many colors as what I've used here um, it doesn't have to be as splotchy as I've put it on and you could definitely do a new uh, more smoother technique I guess I think I'll have to put a little bit lighter green up there. It seems like I used just the bright green and the white up there. Uh, I am going to do a quick touch up around the background here. Right here, I didn't get paint all the way to the front. I'm not worried about where the eyes are because... that in that line around the eyes I'm just seeing where I kind of missed the background there I'm just getting some paint on the background while I let my eyes dry. So we can go back to our eyes here. All right, I think while they're drying though, I'll take my white, let me get my other brush back. And uh, we need to highlight up along the top edge of the mouth line. Oh, there's a lot of paint. And then I did a little bit of highlighting below it as well. Just a rough kind of sketching it in there. I'm just using this filbert brush, but you can certainly use a round to do this. Almost dry brushing this on. Um, right here he is so cute oh my gosh all right I'm gonna go back to the eyes I want the top of the eye to be brighter so let's see what I did here I'm not 100% sure what colors I used I did use the green and the white, but I must have used a lot of yellow to get that really, really bright. That's a little brighter right there. So that was the, the bright green and the bright yellow and a little bit of white. A lot of the yellow color. Get that little bit of brighter almost neon green. Okay, so down here on the bottom, um, I did a little bit of the darker yellow and a little bit of burnt umber. I didn't do a whole lot of burnt umber. But it needed to be darker. I needed a little weight down here in the eye. And if you feel like you've lost your bright yellow in there, then you can just put a wash of bright yellow back in it. And a little darkness down there. 
And I think I do want to put a little bit of bright yellow back in here. So I'm just grabbing some bright yellow and I'm just going to tap it in through the center. I think that's going to brighten the eye up a little bit. This is actually Hansa Yellow Medium, not Bright Yellow, but I call it Bright Yellow on my palette because it's the bright yellow, not the, not the darker yellow. Okay, that looks better. He's looking cute, don't you think? So cute. Okay, let's paint um, the circle around his eye, which is black. I'm going to thin my black down. I think I might actually... Use my other round brush. So thin my paint to inky consistency here. And I know it's not going to be a perfect circle, <laughs> but I'm going to do my best. Follow the lines, or the shape, I guess I should say. You might want to make sure your frog body is dry. See, I already made a wobble wobble there. Um, so you're not laying your arm or across wet paint. Definitely had a little boo 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 there. <laughs> he looks flat there on the bottom. I'll have to try and fix that. See if I can round that out a little bit. See if I can remove the black without removing the shading color I put inside the eye. Okay, that looks better. All right, let's do the next one. I try to keep the same pressure on the brush as I go around the circle, and that's why I do small sections at a time. Because the longer you try to go with the brush, the harder you want to push or the more tired your hand will get. And this eye is definitely not looking like a circle. Look at that eye, man. That's a wonky eye. Okay, let's paint his pupils or his whatever they are in. Um, you can give him round pupils. Whatever you like. They're just black. I think I got this one a little bit taller, so let's make this guy a little taller. All right, there are his pupils. And then for the white part in his eye, uh, I can just go do this with my round. It doesn't matter what brush you use here. Um, I just picked up some white paint and did a little dabbing on the side, a little on that side, a little dabbing on this side, a little bit on this side. I didn't worry too much about exactly if they were the same a couple little dots in here and that did his eyes he's so cute so cute except for that wonky eye well we all have a wonky eye so you know he's got to have one i guess i'm going to dry those eyes real quick because i need to lay my line drawing on here well, actually, I can do the stenciling part while the eyes are drying. So we're going to take our drywall tape. I'll figure out which side is sticky because I accidentally painted on the wrong side the other day. <laughs> I'm going to take a piece of 
makeup sponge here. I keep them, I mean they start out big like this and as I use it, I always use on the end of it, um, as I use it when I'm done I lay it on its side for the paint to dry and then I cut it off just so I don't get paint on my scissors but you can cut it off wet too until you know I, I use them till there's you know nothing left of them so don't throw them away if you've just used them one time and those these things will last forever all right we're gonna take some burnt umber on our sponge makeup sponge here and we're just gonna create some some texture on here just wherever you want I might zoom in a little bit so you can see that a little bit better and just wherever you want it this is just a little bit of burnt umber gets too dark touch it back with your finger okay here there everywhere it doesn't really matter where it goes just put some on there if I get out behind my or out in the background or in the eye I do want to remove that <laughs> okay this really brings him to life I think up here put some around this eye I'm trying to put it in the same place as I put it on my original one so that will kind of help you guys a little bit Um, let's see. Alright, let's go down here. This is just burnt umber on this little makeup sponge. Not very much paint. Makeup sponges are not absorbent, so you want to use just a little bit of paint at a time. Don't uh, get too much on your uh, sponge or it will, it'll just go everywhere on your painting and then you'll be a little sad you'll have to clean it off or some of it off anyway okay super super cute i love this little guy he's so cute okay i think i think that looks pretty good for our stenciling on him. So I'm going to shade underneath the eyes before I put the glasses on. I, you can do it after you put the glasses on. I'm going to use some burnt umber and just do a little. Burnt umber is a little transparent so it won't cover up all of our hard work, but it will give a little shadow under his little eyes. Okay, you can throw this little bit of burnt umber wherever you feel like, like you need it. And so now I want to make sure that's all dry so I can put my pattern back on here. This is harder than it looks. It's not really hard. It's just allowing yourself to just throw paint on there and be okay with where it goes. There's, you know, other than trying to make it like my original one, so that's the only reason I was trying to place it in certain areas, it really doesn't matter where you put the paint. Um, of course, if you want a brighter area on your painting, you want to try and put lighter colors on there. But this truly is one of the simplest things that you can paint. I mean, so easy. So incredibly easy. All right, that feels pretty dry. So I'm going to put my line drawing on here and try to line up his eyes. That one's a little wonky, so it won't line up for sure. I do want to take that. I mean, traditional painting, you know, in, in decorative painting, the only things that I used from that was on the eyes, where I floated the color on the eyes. and. Um, here a little bit and around the eyes you know I didn't really float it down here I just placed it and kind of let it let it be but um, there's not really a whole lot of traditional painting here 
All right, let's see if this is gonna transfer on here. If my paint's dry enough, it will. If it's not, it won't. So let's give a peek. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Now, I'm pretty sure my glasses are not perfect <laughs> because I just drew them by hand and let's move our carbon paper over here, our transfer paper. Oh, we're not that far. Oh, let's make sure I got all my lines. All right, there's his lovely little glasses. And again, this is where you can be creative and paint your glasses any color that you want. Um, they do not have to be black, uh, but that's what color I went with. So I'm just gonna use my small round brush and paint them in black. I don't know why, why angle you back out so you can see the whole guy. Just give it a nice coat of black. Just took me one coat, so um, depending on what brand of paint you're using, you may have to apply two coats. See, I've got it too close to his eye over here, so I'm going to have to adjust that when I paint it. A little bit of water in your paint. Make it um, a good flowing consistency here. That's going to make it so much easier. It's amazing what a little bit of white paint did for those eyes. I know. Isn't, isn't that the truth, man? That little bit of highlight on there, and it just, oh, I got a little bit of white in my paint there. Probably should move some of my black down here away from the white. <laughs> I don't want gray glasses. I mean, we're gonna have different colors on top of them, but I don't like for them to stay black. He's so cute. A little bit too much paint in my brush there. I don't like globby paint on my, my paintings. I like it for it to be a nice, smooth, flowy paint. Fill in your glasses, any color that you want. He would look cute with some orange glasses, or some purple glasses. All right, I'm gonna see if I can adjust this line down here a little bit, because I don't want it to be quite so close to the eye. So I'm gonna come down, and then I'm gonna see if I can erase that one. Just like my original ones, I did not get these shaped the same. But what can you do when you're freehand and stuff, you know? Let me make this side a little wider. Right through here somewhere. Not really sure where that wideness needs to be, but... It's a little wonky. A little wonky. All right. I'm going to have to go with that because uh, right here, something's not right right here. Something's not right. Oh. 
All right, a little bit better. We'll just go with that. Let's see if I can erase my graphite lines. We're gonna stencil on my eraser. We're gonna stencil on these eyes. Now, the stenciling I did on the eyes, you don't have to necessarily stencil. You could just use a small brush and put dabs on there. Um, I just used the stencil because it was the fastest way to to get the job done. So, let's see if I can erase this line. If I didn't put it into wet paint, it should erase off of there very easily. Okay, so when I did my stenciling on my glasses here, I just used this punchinella and a couple of my little sponges and sponged on some colors. Now, because we're working in small areas here, you want you will want to have a damp brush to clean up any areas you get outside of the glasses and uh, just use some small pieces, um, whatever you've got, just grab them and you can use any side because we're doing small areas. So we'll start with some red and put some red on here. Let's see, put a couple down here. You see I went outside the glasses here. So I'll just clean that up with my damp brush. Let's see, some red over here. A little bit here. All right, let's go to the next color. Um, let's do some green. I just flipped this over and went to the other side, and then I can use that side, and then I can use that side. This is just a little little piece of makeup sponge. So some green in there. Definitely went outside the glasses there. But if you clean up as soon as it gets on there, it just cleans up with a damp brush. So. And like I said, you can just use a paintbrush and do some dabs on here. You don't have to necessarily use um, this punchinella and a sponge. Just do what you like. All right, uh, I did put a few yellow ones on here. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of yellow on this end. I didn't do a whole lot of yellow. here. All right. Um, I did purple and white mixed together, so I'm going to grab a little bit of dioxamine and some white and just blend it right here on my little sponge. And I just went to a new spot, the opposite end of where I had the yellow. And that's definitely outside my lines. So we'll just clean that baby up. Clean up. Aisle four, aisle six, whatever aisle it is. Can't remember. You have to know what movie I'm talking about to know about cleanup. I was never in aisle eight or whatever it was. <laughs> okay. That was from the movie Mr. Mom. I had black on my paintbrush. Where that came from, <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. But we're going to clean that baby up. Clean it up. It's just paint. Don't stress out about it. All right, where was I? Purple. Purple, purple. A little bit more purple here. And outside my glasses, clean up. Purple over here. Clean up. I didn't use white on here when I was doing these colors because I'm going to highlight with some white. So now I'm going to go with some aquamarine and some white and make that light blue color. A lot of white, not a lot of blue. Okay, that was a lot of paint there. 
making a big mess with this one. Just do you. I got a lot of places I got to clean up here. Let's do a little bit here. Got some way out here. I don't know how I did that, but I did. Okay. Um, I'm going to put a little bit here just to fill in a little bit. are looking pretty cute I think that's enough of the stenciling on there okay <clears throat> last thing to do to this is put some highlight on the glasses and I did a highlight across here and I did it twice because white does not stand on top very well I did one here and across here down here and I did shade underneath the glasses so we will do that as well give them that little bit of raised look on the face so I'll go back over the white and the brighten to get that highlight standing on top I don't think I missed any place and then we're going to do a little burnt umber. I didn't ever use my um, my burnt sienna. I know I used it in my little one, my first one. I think I used it through here where I used more of that uh, burnt umber. So um, I did use it on the other one. I just cannot remember where. A little bit of shadow under the glasses. A little bit of water here. Okay, take that all the way to the edge. Make sure you can see your shadow under the eyes. If you can't, you can add a little bit more in there. And if you want to add some of this down here, you can. But I think he's pretty much done. He is super darn cute. I just think he is so, so cute, you guys. And like I said, you can use whatever colors that you want on yours. I'm going to lay him down here in just a second. Put my original out here, see if I got even remotely close, which I'm sure I did not. So if you've got any questions, now's a good time to ask those questions and put them in the comments and I'll take a look at them. Let me get him down here. Turn my palette cam off here. Uh, get rid of the frog and the palette camera. And we can see what they look like side by side. I always like to compare. Oh, I actually like the one I did today a little bit better. Really like it a little bit better. So cute. So cute. I, I really like them both. So, so much fun. So much fun. He was so much fun to paint. And see, when, you, when you're putting those paints on there, I'm telling you, it just looks like a horrific mess. <laughs> and you think, how is that ever going to be anything cute? But it all comes together. It really does all come together. And um, it works out. That That's why I like doing this style of painting so much. Uh, I just think it's so fun and it lets you just be so free. So do we have any questions from anybody? I appreciate you guys so much. If you have enjoyed this video at all, please be sure and give me a thumbs up. If you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe. Um, I really enjoy bring the, bringing these lives to you guys. Uh, it just makes my day when I get to sit down and paint with you guys. So I hope some of you did paint along or are going to at least tempt it. It's going to be ugly. It's going to just be ugly. Just 
push through and continue and by the time you get to the end you're going to be so pleased with this little guy um so pleased with him and uh, i just love him i think he is so so cute so um let me look for any questions you're welcome brenda the glasses look like mine <laughs> sort of i think they're sort of the same shape mine's a little more square these are a little more rounded but yeah, I think I did kind of look at my glasses to try and see what a pair of glasses would look like. So, yep. Um, you are so welcome, Cheryl. Thank you, Rosanna. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Ruby. Thank you, Cindy and Robin and Kay. Oh, my gosh. Thank you guys so, so much. I have enjoyed painting this with you so much. I just was so excited to sit down and do this one with you so I can't wait to come up with the next one that I'm gonna do for you and uh, get to working on something that I can do on my next live I've got some other videos that will probably be coming out as premieres so be watching for those uh, when I do my premieres I like to be on with you guys uh, chatting um, so you know when I do those I'm there to answer questions and um, look for your comments and stuff so Thank you, Jean. I hope I'm saying your name right. It's not Jeannie, so if I am, I apologize. Um, I never know. I, I hate to mispronounce someone's name. My name gets mispronounced all the time, but I'm used to it. <laughs> so, okay, you guys, that's it for today. I've loved every minute. I hope you have too. I can't wait. Please, if you paint this, be sure and tag me on social media so I can see your beautiful frogs. I cannot wait to see them um, and see what you do because you can do any colors that you want, whatever you enjoy doing. So I will see you guys on the next one. Please give me that thumbs up. So long, everybody. Have a great and wonderful remainder of your week and a blessed weekend, you guys. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.